Radical. Welcome to part two of Radical Rapid Fire Combat Response for October 18th through October 24th, 2021. Short comments, quick replies. Agent Chris, in all honesty, not a big fan of mayo, but I don't mind it on the McDonald's spicy chicken sandwich. I'll have to try the Wendy's chicken sandwich soon. Have a good Sunday, Rick. Yeah, the properties of mayo change drastically depending on, you know, what you put it on. The same sandwich that would be disgusting with mayo, like a hamburger, you know, on chicken, maybe not as offensive. You know, one thing that comes to mind, I hate, I hate uh, just any hamburger. Any hamburger with mayo, can't stand it, can't take it. And I, you know, take it off my Wendy's crispy chicken also. But, uh, you know, maybe it might be tolerable in some cases. Rune Mamba. At least it has upgraded graphics and GTA 5 controls. I'm talking about the GTA trilogy. Remastered. That alone makes it worth $60 to me. Unlike Nintendo, re-releasing Super Mario 64, Sunshine Galaxy with practically no difference for $60. Yeah, if you start to grade the $60 re-release trilogies, I think this might actually go down as possibly one of the best. Because not only are they improving the graphics, they're actually giving it GTA 5 type controls. Now, they did not change the controls at all. And so people would say, the controls are perfect in, you know, Galaxy and Sunshine and, and whatnot. But it would go a big distance to actually customize or maybe change the controls a bit to show people, hey, you're not just doing a shameless cash grab. And Nintendo's the king of shameless cash grabs but you're actually getting into the game and changing some things about the game, so it'll make it a somewhat new experience. It'll make it somewhat a new experience for people that played the originals. Troy Bilko. It's a huge part of those early games, especially Vice City and GTA 3. The worlds aren't as deep as San Andreas, so it would suck if some of those great tracks were missing. Yeah, like uh, right now I'm thinking about some of the music in, in Vice City. The first time I heard some of those songs. And... I can't imagine playing Vice City without some of those key songs missing from the game. But I know there's all these issues that come up and there's these licenses that expire. You know, you buy a certain license to use something in your game, but it's not infinite. Meaning you can't, you know, bring out the same game and have those uh, same tracks playing. But for the sake of the remaster, I hope they kept every single key track from especially Vice City. Because it literally, we just talked about changing the game, it literally changed the game's, games for the worse if they don't have all the same soundtrack. Now, if they add some songs, and that's different, it actually might increase the enjoyment of the game. But now if they take away some of those tracks. Dan Smith, what they need to do is release GTA 6. I know that GTA 6 has been in development, but no, they'd rather milk the old games lame. I forgot that the number 6 comes after 5. I feel you. I understand that, right? So you have GTA 5 that comes out in 2013 on the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Then you have it re-released, you know, better graphics, controls, what have you, on the Xbox One and PS4. And then they're coming out with it again. GTA 5, which will be on, is is that going to be like the, it's going to be the first time GTA, the series has been on three different platforms, but I was about to say, is that the first time it's ever been done? No, you know, Nintendo has, you know, Super Mario, the original Super Mario or whatever, those Mario games pretty much released on like every platform in the future, you know, so they're the kings of doing it. It is kind of lame. Uh, I hope they're working on GTA 6 I'm sure they are. How could they not be? You know, does someone remind them, hey, 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 GTA 6? Oh, yeah, we keep releasing GTA 5, so uh, GTA 6. So hopefully GTA 6 will be coming in the next couple years, hopefully. Gnar Kalar 420. I think you will still have access to the old version if you got it already. San Andreas will be on the Xbox Game Pass if you don't want to spend $60. It's dumb the whole trilogy won't be on Game Pass. GTA 3 will be on PS Now. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of, I mean, I get it because it'll be hard selling the entire trilogy and I guess they figure that out because so many people have Game Pass, right? So many people have Game Pass, uh, then they might say to themselves, what's the whole point of me buying this trilogy if I can get the whole trilogy on Game Pass? But lucky for me, my favorite, by far favorite of the series, San Andreas, is going to be on Game Pass. 
So I get to, you know, test out this new Game Pass. But uh, seems like Vice City is definitely the one. Uh, I'm curious to see about the popularity. A lot of people will say that Vice City is their favorite. Uh, not a whole lot of love for the original GTA 3. People look at their favorites and they're like, well, either Vice City or San Andreas. And I think personally, San Andreas is by far the best game. And just technically, it's like by far the best game. Uh, the setting, I get the settings. A lot of people like the setting of the 80s and, and whatnot and all the neon aesthetics. I get that. But just looking at them as games, yeah, San Andreas is the best game of the series. The Winged Avenger. Rick, I second the advice that Wolfpack 1 gave you. The Hitcher is an awesome horror movie that will keep you on the edge of your seat the entire time. It's one of those films that you just have to watch eventually. Eventually, I will watch uh, The Hitcher. I'll get around to it. Um, but years ago, I've said out also about other things that I never got around to. Uh, here's the problem is I'm not immortal. That is a big problem. I think everyone shares that problem, right? You know, not enough time for everything you want to do in the world. Serbot 42. That list was a poor attempt to sneak money into their pockets. A lot of these people don't really have a good position uh, on Netflix and with good reason, a uh, good position as a matter on Netflix. Um, yeah. Uh, you notice how they were so shocked at the Dave Chappelle special. But instantly, it switched from, hey, we got to get rid of these Dave Chappelle specials to, yeah, what we're going to need is, uh, we got some demands. Uh, whoa, whoa, demands? <clears throat> yeah, 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 we got demands. We're going to need to get some of us <coughs> in real time. I ate too much peanut butter. <sighs> Probably not a good idea before I do one of my audio recordings. But damn. Get some good peanut butter. Might do a review of this peanut butter at some point. So what was I uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't like this Dave Chappelle special. And Netflix is like, okay, we'll get rid of the special. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And they didn't say that. What we're going to need is we're going to need a lot of our people, trans people, basically running things at Netflix. Yeah, it's a big shift, wasn't it? Like, oh, we have problems with this. And then, yeah, we want to run Netflix, basically. Mm -hmm. Mike's Movies. Is their idea really that we're supposed to mind control people so that everyone agrees and thinks the way they do? I'm at a loss here. Seems to be the case. You know, I guess the push is to make sure no one ever laughs at men wearing wigs and makeup and dresses. That is the point that they want to get to. And if you dare laugh at, you know, a NFL linebacker sized person, fully muscular, trying to look like a pretty dainty lady. If you dare laugh at that, then there's something wrong with you. And that's wrong, wrong laughter. That's wrong think. Just self-awareness, I would say. Like if you as a person that was trans, you should be self-aware. You should have a mirror and you should look in the mirror and be like, well, I look a bit ridiculous. You know, you can feel good. You can feel happy and everything. But you have to be aware of how the rest of the world, 99% of people, uh, really see you. you know? Try not to laugh. The Winged Avenger. Rick, you should stand up for your right to be recognized as the superstar NBA player you believe you are. Stop letting conservatives oppress you and fight what you feel in your heart. <laughs> you're a uniquely perfect soul. And if you truly know deep down inside that you're a top basketball player, the world should respect your beliefs and recognize you as such. And the NBA should let you play in their league. Yeah. I hear you out. I hear you out. That's why I am going to go when they have a need on the 76ers for a point guard, right? Because Ben Simmons, I don't know if he's going to play or whatever. So I'm going to go there, march in their office, and tell them all, I am white and I demand a position on your team. I don't think they even have a white player on that team. If they don't have a white player on that team, I'll be like, listen, here's the deal. I am white, and I'm tired of whites being misrepresented and the ratio of whites on basketball teams not being very high. Yes, so uh, I'm going to need to be the starting point guard on your team. Can you play basketball? Yeah, I've played basketball before. Okay, can you run our sets? Have you ever played professionally before? Uh, how's your defensive ability? Uh I'm white! I demand to be here on the team! Terry W. 
The one thing is this mob lacks a sense of humor. Yeah, Terry. The thing about mobs is the way to infiltrate any kind of mob and to dismantle a mob from the inside is to make one of them laugh. Yeah, just make them laugh because when people laugh, it has the effect of making them happy. You know, most people, right? Some people are just miserable. But, you know, when you have an uh, angry mob set up, basically just start cracking some jokes, you know? And then it'll spread throughout the mob and they'll say, you know what? You know, we forget why we was really going to do this. You know, we're just going to chill out, you know? Personally, I think that. But uh, like I said, some people are just beyond help, you know? But making people laugh, that generally has a power, a very powerful powerful effect on people you know i think it's one of the biggest powers in the world is the ability to make others laugh rando 1975 i just don't get the you're just jealous that you're not getting those big donations well if rick actually took any donations i could see the logic in that but he's not taking anything from his fans slash supporters so their jealous comments have no merit yeah that's the thing that just kind of doesn't really work out a lot at least here you know and i'm not saying that uh, there's not people out there that are quite jealous of people getting large donations in fact i'm sure that there are people right now even listening to this that are quite jealous of many people uh, many youtubers in the gaming community community specifically that get donations like that's just probably a fact there are people jealous of others for you know getting donations I, though, I'm a different breed. I'm different because I see these people getting these donations. I see that I see that as a character flaw, a key character flaw. I see them as e-beggars, you know. I actually look down upon them. Even if some of these people get very, very large donations, and even if some of these people have more money, have more money than I do, I look down upon them because of the means, how they had to get their money. That's what you have to look at. Not the fact that they have a lot of money, but how did they get to that point? And I think it's a, a lost thing. It's it's basically just called being, being a proud person. Being a person very happy with yourself. And being someone that has integrity. Rando 1975, everyone else... I have far too much integrity to become an e-beggar, to take donations on YouTube. That's just a fact. And I think a lot of people, they get angry about that and they try to say that I'm jealous. But how can I be jealous if I actually look down upon all these e-beggars?